Tears of the Kingdom recently came out and people are making wild machinations. Heck, people are now arguing over how to optimize certain machines. Now that is some quality engineering. But I'm not a Zelda channel. I usually talk about Stemma, my creature collector project that I've been working on based off of STEM topics. And that's the thing, right? STEM stands for Science, Tech, Engineering, and Math. And while I've seen some people point out that some of my past designs fall into a certain science category, maybe have a computer theme, or even cover math, there aren't any engineering designs. Or are there? Here's the thing. Engineering is about using science concepts and topics to overcome a certain problem. So many times where there is an engineering based design, the science behind it comes to mind first when thinking of the design's concept. For example, my Ventaworm references Vantablack, which are carbon rods that are engineered to absorb over 99.9% .9 of light. Chipu shows off waveforms, especially the ones that were engineered to deliver sound in the days of limited hardware. But there are some tools and machines found in engineering that can probably make creature designs on their own. So we'll be diving into mechanical engineering today and go over a three-stage line I made based off of simple machines. Simple machines are defined to be made up of few parts that can still change the direction and or magnitude of the force you're applying. There are six simple machines defined since the Renaissance time period. Three of them actually come from the same shape. But before I get into them, let me talk about the others. Let's start with the lever, which is a bar that pivots on a certain fulcrum. There are three elements to every lever, effort, load, and fulcrum, fulcrum being the pivot point. Now you can scramble the order of these three elements on the bar, leading to three different classes. In class one, the fulcrum is between the effort and load. When you apply force downwards, the load would go up. Mechanical advantage would vary, Class 2 has the load in the middle between you and the fulcrum, which should make it easier for you to lift the load, even if the load isn't lifted as high as you're holding it. Still, this makes a mechanical advantage of more than one. And lastly, Class 3 is your effort going into the middle, which is going to require more from you to lift the load up, yielding a mechanical advantage of less than one. Wait, wait, wait. What is this mechanical advantage I keep yammering about? With any machine, the mechanical advantage is how much the machine amplifies your force. Now, energy is still conserved in these machines. You're still doing the same work with or without the machine, but you're putting in less force over a long distance to exert a lot of force over a short distance. So when I say distance here, it should usually deal with the distance of your effort versus how the load moves. If it makes your force weaker, then that's a mechanical advantage of less than one. And if it makes your force stronger, that's a mechanical advantage of more than one. But a good machine doesn't always have to have a high mechanical advantage. A good machine just needs to get the job done. For example, despite class 3 having less than one mechanical advantage, that's how tongs, hammers, and even your arm muscles are organized so that you could lift stuff with your hands. The load has to be on the other side, and sometimes you can't have the pivot point in the middle all the time. Sometimes you need those different classes of levers, depending on the problem you're facing. Alright, so you rotate a wheel and the axle converts that into directional movement. Mechanical advantage depends on how thick the axle is compared to the wheel size and what you're turning. But in a way, the wheel and axle can actually be called a messed up version of the first class lever where you apply effort around the wheel and the axle is the pivot point fulcrum and the load is being moved directionally. Alright, there should be a lot to talk about this one, but I'll be going over it very briefly. A pulley looks like a wheel on an axle that's spinning about, but your effort here isn't spent on turning anything, but rather pulling. In the lever, you have to push down or up. Wheel and axle, you gotta turn something. And here, you gotta pull on a rope, which is redirected to lift the load. A single pulley by itself doesn't have any mechanical advantage, but you can organize a system of pulleys in a way that does make it easier to lift the load. Alright, this is where I can start showing off my designs because the remaining three share an important shape, the triangle. triangle. What's an inclined plane? A plane in this sense means a flat sheet, and it's angled at an incline. It's basically a ramp. 
Mechanical advantage depends on the ramp's slope from the ground, and yeah, instead of lifting something directly, ramps can make that vertical movement much easier because you're spending time to push horizontally and gradually making the load go up against gravity. So I wanted to make a design off of this, but just having a weaponless battle bot roaming around might not have the most exciting shape, so I paired it with a scorpion to make a rampling. Ooh, now their tail might look like a shovel here, which is more of a class 3 lever and a wedge. More on those soon, but it's more based off of the inclined plane shape that the body has. So if you look at a side view of the inclined plane, you see a triangle. Now use a sharp angle of the triangle and you get a wedge. Mechanical advantage is based on how narrow or wide the wedge is. This simple machine is all about digging into a material and splitting it down. You force pushing it down, which leads to the two other faces of the triangle to push outwards upon the material you're digging into. A raxnet here now wields a more dangerous axe and has claws that can pierce the ground, unlike the smooth ones you could go over in the last design. Finally, we've got the screw. Alright, so this doesn't look like a triangle, does it? What does this have to do with the inclined plane and wedge? Well, take that triangle and wrap it around a pole. And now you've got a screw. Look, if we're gonna call a wheel and axle a simple machine, despite being a version of a lever that spins, screws are basically an inclined plane that spins. Mechanical advantage depends on the thickness of the screw and how close together the spiraling threads are. So here's my final stage. Screw peon. I ended up making the tail screw drill omnidirectional, which is a rare kind of screw that can work by spinning clockwise and counterclockwise. I just wanted to maintain symmetry, as I'll be needing to flip sprites in the project that I'm working on. And there's a thought in the back of my head to make a mod where specifically being clockwise or counterclockwise matters, but I don't know. It's a lot of work to implement that. I have other engineering concepts as designs, but I didn't want to overload this video, especially since I'm talking about simple machines most of the time. So I'll just thank you for watching my video. Engineering mod designs are harder to recognize as engineering concepts are, well, essentially science and math. There are some popular engineering constructs like the trebuchet, but I haven't figured out how to make a design off of that just yet. But before you go, Engineering isn't just mechanical engineering. Biochem engineers synthesize specific proteins to cure diseases. Electrical audio engineers experiment to deliver quality sound. There's certainly a lot more fields in engineering. So if you wanted to make an engineering themed design, go on forth. There's a whole world waiting for you. Alright, so thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. I actually have a challenge going on until the end of June. So check out my latest video, the one I uploaded right before this one, to see how you can participate. Otherwise, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you around.